gonna talk to you. Is it better to be a wholesaler or to be a cash buyer? Let's check it out. If you would, subscribe, comment, like, don't like, thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Is it better to be a wholesaler or a cash buyer or some sort of a hybrid in between? All right, so, you know, thinking about it, somebody was talking to me about wholesaling and this and that, and they liked it, you know, and they had some good reasons, and I, I'm with you on that. So, I mean, to be a to be a wholesaler, you don't really need a lot of capital. It's a good way to get into real estate investing if you're if you're just interested, just getting into it. You know, you don't, like I said, you don't need a lot of capital. You just gotta find a deal. You gotta find a buyer. You gotta find a seller. You gotta find that cash buyer. So the cash buyer's gotta be in there. Wholesaler doesn't necessarily have to be in there. If you're the cash buyer, you can just go out and get what you want and be done with it. Um, as on a wholesale level, you know, there's a lot of regulation type of stuff going on around wholesaling. There's a Bloomberg article that came out kind of, in my opinion, was kind of bashing wholesaling in general and wholesalers. So, you know, maybe as many people won't want to deal with a wholesaler as opposed to a cash buyer. If you can't produce, you know, proof of funds that are legit that show, look, I can take down the deal. Um, you may have some trouble, but wholesaling is proven to work, you know, in a lot of situations and a lot of stories and a lot of things that I've been seeing, people are, are getting opportunities to be a wholesaler without even looking for it. You know, they're taking down a deal and then come in, you know, a week later and somebody's offering a premium over that just to buy that house or to buy that property that they've already got a contract on, you know, with the housing market the way it is. You know, they're basically a, a wholesaler by default. If they take the deal, they sell the contract and, and go down the road. You know, if they got a, a contract on a house for 500,000, somebody comes in and says, look, I'll give you 50,000 just to give me the deal. And then they're taking down the house for 550. They made $50,000, you know, stuff like that. It's going on all over the market. So, you know, you know, a lot of these people are saying wholesaling is dead or is wholesaling dead. I don't think it's dead. And I think there's always going to be um, some sort of a opportunity for an intermediary type of situation like that. And it's, like I said, it's a great, it's a great way to get into real estate investing if you're not already in it, or if you don't have a lot of capital to commit, you know, basically you need just to be able to hustle, to put in that sweat equity, to find those cash buyers, to find the, the, the people, the motivated sellers and go from there. So, it definitely has its positives. It definitely has its negatives, just like anything. But you get in, you get paid, you get out, you leave all, you know, if it's a remodel situation, a fix and flip, something like that, you're leaving that to somebody else. And that's, you know, that's great. That's their opportunity to to fix it up, to appreciate the property value. And you've got your money and you're on to the next deal, you know. So um, you get in, you get out, you get paid, you're done, you know. But on the cash buyer side, there's definitely positives to being the cash buyer themselves, you know. So um, in my situation, I've seen where if you're the cash buyer, um, you're getting private sellers bringing you deals, you're getting real estate agents bringing you deal because they know you, that you're a cash buyer, that you can close the deal quick, that you, you, you know, if, you, if you've developed a reputation as being somebody that, you know, will close the deal, that can take the deal down, well, then agents, if they get a, a pr prospective buyer or seller that says, look, I, I'm in this situation, I need to sell this house fast, or I need to sell this piece of property fast, or they may have one that's been sitting on the market and the seller says, hey, look, man, this thing's been sitting out there for six months, a year, we haven't got any interest on it. Do you know anybody that could just buy this thing and get it off my back? Well, then that agent may say, you know what, I do know somebody is a cash buyer. Well, tell them to bring me an offer. So then you're getting these deals from agents and you're getting the backstory from the, you know on the seller as far as their motivations to sell and stuff like that. And then you're also getting wholesalers as the cash buyer bringing you deals too because they're on a time crunch. Most of the time they've got a contract and they've got a certain amount of time to get the deal done. And they're looking for, for those cash buyers. And if you're that cash buyer, you're getting so you're getting deals from everywhere and you get a lot of deals to look at. And you gotta look at a lot of deals to actually get a deal done. So that's kind of the good thing about being a cash buyer. Another thing about being a cash buyer on that side of, you know, the real estate investing is you got more time, you know, with a, with a wholesale situation, you know, as soon as you find that deal, I mean, the clock is ticking to find somebody to assign it to, to find that cash buyer to, to put the deal off on and get paid on. So as a cash buyer, look, you know, I've got my contract. I know when I'm going to close on the deal and, you know, 
I'm not really that worried about the time crunch. You know, if I need an extra week or an extra month or whatever the case may be, if I need to do some due diligence, if I need to get some plans together, if I need to check with the city, it, it, you know, I don't feel pressure to get the deal out again, you know, so it's just, you know, you get more time, you have more flexibility because, you know, you control the, the, the sales purchase, you know, you're the cash buyer. So it's nice to have that time, that flexibility, the pressure's not necessarily on you. Um, I've also found out that more people will deal with you as the actual cash buyer, you know, so I know as a wholesaler, you can get proof of funds letters and stuff like that, you know, that you can present to a prospective seller, a motivated seller and stuff like that. But, you know, if you can just pull up your phone or, you know, give them a, a reference, a true reference of somebody else that you've done a, a deal with in the past that said, yeah, he, he closed on the deal. He had the money. It went through pretty quick. It was, you know, easy breezy, no problems. Bam. You know, that, that carries a lot of weight. And, you know, like I said, more people will deal with you. Um, in in the situation where uh, a lot of times these people, if, if they're really shopping around their deal or they're shopping around their house or their land or whatever they're selling, they're going to deal with multiple uh, wholesalers, maybe even cash buyers, stuff like that. But I can, I can tell you from experience that it seems like, at least in the markets that I deal in, there's a lot more wholesalers that will do an assignment than there are cash buyers that would take the deal down themselves. So if you, if you if I'm going up against three wholesalers and I'm the one cash buyer and I show them, look, I'm the cash buyer. I can, I can, we can go to the title company. You pick the title company. It doesn't even matter to me, you know, put that power in their hands. A lot of times what I do is I just tell them, look, there's this title company, this title company, this title company, they're all close by. You pick which one you want to go with. You're comfortable with it because the wholesaler is going to say, you got to go through my title company. You got to go through my title company because they're comfortable with a wholesale transaction at that title company. Maybe they've done it there before, or, you know, that title company has a reputation as a wholesale friendly um, title company. And so they're going to pressure that seller to go to their title company. And so as a, as a cash buyer, I tell them, look, it's your choice, you know, because they're all, a lot of them are selling title insurance and stuff like that through the same title insurance companies that I've seen. And so I can deal with any of them. It doesn't make a difference to me. So that kind of gives the seller a little bit more comfort level. Now, a lot of times they'll say, well, I'm not real sure, you know, this and that, but then you're, you're going to beat out that wholesaler as a cash buyer 90% of the time, even if the offers, you know, close, you know, and they'll tell you like, well, they're offering me this much or they're offering me that much, but you know, I'm pretty upfront with, if I'm dealing with a private seller, I'll lay it all out there. Look, I'm going to sell this house or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to buy this land from you and I'm going to turn around. I'm going to subdivide it and I'm going to sell it off and that's it. You know, you're going to get your money. I'm going to make money. My goal here is to make a profit. I'm happy to give you a real estate. I probably hand out my real estate agent's phone number more than he hands it out. You know, like, look, a lot of times I'm putting it up front, like, look, call this guy. He could probably get you a little bit more. It may take you six months to sell it, you know, completely or whatever, but you're going to get more than I'm offering you. And a lot of times when, when they're coming to me on that type of deal, they're like, look, I don't want to deal with it. I don't live there local. I don't want the property. I don't need the property. I just want a quick, easy, cash me out, send me down the road. You go make some money. That's fine. Thank you for being up front with me. I understand what you're doing. I understand what I'm doing. And there you go, you know, but and then I'm, I'm, I'm up front with them about what a wholesaler does. Like, look, they're going to get you to sign this contract and they're going to go shop that contract around and the deal may or may not go through if they can or cannot find a cash buyer. There you go. That's what a wholesaler does. That's what I do. Take your pick. So if the wholesaler's offering them, I don't know, on a vacant land deal, maybe they're offering them 25,000. Well, I may offer them 20,000. And they may say, well, you know, you're going to be quick, close, easy deal. I'm dealing with the cash buyer themselves. You know, I don't have to wait for this wholesaler 60 days to find somebody else to buy it. You know, in two weeks, we get the deal done and you're out of here. All right, for $5,000, that's worth it for me. Or they may say, well, this wholesaler is offering it to me for $25,000. If you can match that, the deal is yours. Okay, I don't have to beat it. I just got to match it because I can beat it on time and service. And, you know, you know I'm just going to get the deal done quicker. So that's the good thing about being the cash buyer. You know, there's bad things to it. You know, you got to put out a lot of capital outlays, large outlays sometimes, uh, which limits the number of deals you can do. 
a lot of times unless you've got some sort of investors. And this is mainly in context about vacant land um, as far as being a cash buyer, wholesaler. A lot of this applies to a lot of different areas of real estate investing. Um, and as a cash buyer, basically, I gotta find the seller, the motivated seller. I gotta find the deal. I gotta find the property that I'm gonna buy. Uh, then I turn it over to a real estate agent, put it on market, MLS. I don't carry a, a, a license and that's it. They'll find the, the buyer from there. So, and as a wholesaler, you gotta find the motivated seller and you gotta find the buyer, the cash buyer to take the deal down. And so you're, you're hustling to find the motivated seller, then you're hustling to find the cash buyer, which is why you need to have that cash buyer list if you are gonna be a wholesaler. Um, and you know, you're at the mercy of the buyer and you're at the mercy of the seller in that situation as a wholesaler. You know, either one of them can kind of be fickle in the deal and maybe back out and then you're like, look, I'm gonna make 3,000 on this deal and I'm running all over town doing this and that, you know? So uh, then there's that public perception thing, regulation, Man, and I get calls, I do advertisements and stuff like that, and I get calls from angry, angry real estate agents telling me, what do you think you're doing ripping off these people? And you know, I'm like, look, I'm not even a wholesaler, I'm just an investor. I buy these things and I sell them, and you know, I'm, a, I'm the buyer, don't, don't call me up. But they, I, every time, I, I get a call at least once a month from a, a real estate agent trying to shake me down, thinks I'm a, some sort of, you know, I think I'm a wholesaler doing this and that, and it's kind of weird, but I think that goes to the public perception of wholesalers, right or wrong, you know, but there's there's people out there putting out that wholesalers are bad, and you know, there's bad people in anything, and there's unscrupulous people in anything, so I don't necessarily think that's true about wholesalers, you know, at all. Um, but, you know, those are some of the goods, those are some of the bads, it really just depends on your personal situation the level of involvement you want to take on in the deal. You know, as a wholesaler, you know, that's it's really pretty great because like I said, it gives you a, a, a an entry point into it and you can do huge amounts of volume, especially if you put a team together and things like that. You're, you know, you can rock and roll because you don't have a lot of big capital outlays. You just, really your biggest capital outlay is not even gonna be in buying the property. It's gonna be more in advertising and mailings and postcards and, you know, because you gotta send out a lot of letters, a lot of postcards, a lot of stuff like that, do a lot of advertising um, for to even get the deals rolling in, you know, and that's to get the phones ringing, to get people talking to you, getting emails, getting deals in front of you, then you gotta look at a lot of these deals, and then, you know, to find a deal. So I think that's the biggest capital outlay for a wholesaler, it's really your advertising and your biggest capital outlay for a cash buyer, uh, because more deals will be brought to you without advertising a lot of times, you know, so your biggest capital outlay there is gonna be actually taking down the deal. So let me know what you think in the comments, like, don't like, let me know what do you think, what's been your experience as being a, a cash buyer or being a wholesaler, uh, your experience with vacant land, wholesale deals, um, which you don't hear but as much about, but you know, they're out there and a lot of times they're some of the more profitable wholesale situations and stories that I've heard about, you know, buying a piece of land, breaking it up, selling it to a home builder, or not even breaking it up, just letting them do their thing with it from there. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Appreciate it. Subscribe, comment. See you on the next one.